Hello everyone, welcome to this session. This is going to be the discussion of geography optional paper one. And there are various observations for this. I would like to start this session with a very positive thing and that goes like Yoga Karmasu Kaushalam. If you practice and if you practice well, then perhaps you are going to develop a habit and characteristic that you would write any answer in any format on any day. And that practice we are looking in you. This is Chandramali in front of you with the special dealing with geography and let's see how the question has come. This platform perhaps Turn Academy is the ever broadening one, the ever deepening one also and many educators that would have been uh, around who would have their own experiences they are coming on all, they are all coming on this platform now. You can see all the educators here ranging from Brunal sir that you all know and perhaps everyone that was even in the offline centers are coming to this platform. This is perhaps your uh, channel. This is my channel link and you can note it down. Chandramali sir for uh, UPSC and you can try to follow me there and I'm going to have a lot of sessions there also in the form of answer writing, essay, in the form of quizzing so you can have it there. And anyone out there who wishes to attempt in 2023 or any relative exam, there's an introductory offer going on. The price was 78, now it is 7998 and if you apply my code of CMC, it is going to be 63898. You can try to maybe spread this word along that there is a program and in that you can have trusted and most of the genuine faculties that are going to come on this platform. Plus three months extension also is given with this program so that you will have 18 plus three that is going to be 21 months, 21 months of togetherness and books you are going to get 20 books plus you are going to have test series and hundreds of tests are being given here. Also, we have the combats being conducted. 23rd of January, you are going to have a test combat, a mega combat, 11 a.m. is the time, 60 minutes and 56 questions that you have to attempt. And if so you win, you are going to get any of these products mentioned here. You just have to enroll by my code and that is CMC, just enroll with it. CMC is the code. Okay, let's begin with the discussion. So this was your geography paper one. Let's see section A first. First question was describe the concept of alteplanation. Now this is a very straightforward question. If you have understood your concepts well in the class, you might have studied about your glacial and the periglacial landforms. If you have studied about these landforms, periglacial and the glacial landforms, perhaps you are going to have a, a very easy time writing this answer. Alteplanation means that alti just shows you some of the height that has come. It will be plane down and this process perhaps happen in your periglacial landforms. So these are the landforms where you have the freezing, the freezing and the thawing of the thawing of the ice. So once it freezes again melts, freezes melts and gives you a range of uh, maybe processes. For example, congelly fluxion congelly fluxion and congelly fraction. So this is something that you could have written and a very straightforward question. And we sort of predicted that this question is going to come multiplication and in the notes and in the sections, we have already covered this. Let's move to second question. One B says that what are the important factors responsible for air mass modification? So please understand a very direct question, air mass modification. The people out there who can understand what are air masses, so if a large homogeneous air parcel is staying over a large homogeneous area which has some homogeneous characteristics of pressure, temperature and difference is very less, it will attain the characteristic of this land area. These are the air masses. How these are modified? So it could be perhaps the answer could be in the physical terms that the physical modification happens, perhaps due to thermal modification that is also mechanical. So these are the very direct questions that have come. Air masses are the ones that are causing different type of weather conditions and different climate in different places and they can be altered, they can be actually manifested or they could be actually played with or modified using physical and mechanism or maybe thermal sort of mechanism when it is going on there, mechanical mechanism. So their moving is one type of modification, their mixing is another type of mix, uh, modification and any of the winds when they try to flow in together them or they bring them together, it is another modification. So change in temperature either in the underlying entity, maybe the land is cool or the ocean is warm. So it is going to modify your air masses. So very easy and very direct question. 
one three now these five questions are perhaps to be done on a mandatory basis these are all to be attempted and see i think this is one paper that we have seen in which every question could be done without any sort of problem so you can understand how geography is perhaps if you have done it well it looks like very easy discuss the hazards associated with rise of sea surface temperature now see this question again is a very clear cut one sea surface temperature the ipcc report that has already talked about few months back it came it talked about that the sea surface temperature is increasing and the question is specifically asking you about rise of sea surface temperature if the sea surface temperature is rising this is to mean that the hazard can be in the form of intensified cyclones can have intensified cyclones plus you can have corals being bleached or impacted by it plus you can have inundation the inundation of the islands you can have various geomorphic cycles taking place geomorphic cycles taking place because of the increase in the volume of the water because of rise of sea surface temperature so sea surface temperature when it rises thermal expansion will happen and perhaps you will have geomorphological cycle again starting in the coastal areas so you have already done if you have done in the classes the coastal geomorphology the coastal geomorphology coastal landforms if you have done this is a very important question that will happen or that will come or that uh, should have come and you should have written it well with the coastal geomorphological evidences and examples let's come to the fourth one gene pool centers are a good hope for biodiversity conservation now please understand gene pools are what gene pools are collection of genes located at a place this is gene pool center higher the diversity or more is the diversity of gene pool more is the genetic material available more is the intermingling that can happen more is the sustainability more is its longevity but if the gene pool center perhaps have only one or two types of gene this is not going to survive long this is not going to survive long so for the survival see the question now for biodiversity conservation so for biodiversity conservation perhaps you will have to take care of a large gene pool center you will have to conserve it and this only is going to save the biodiversity more is the genetic material more is the biodiversity and perhaps our conservation efforts should be to protect these gene pools i hope you got the answer so you will have to elucidate uh, one illustration i can give you the bears of the europe they actually had genetic materials that during the ice ages they could grow in size and when the ice melted down they could again uh, small down thin down this was a genetic mix that they have got some genetic trait that they have got genes they define the genetic traits and if you understand that there are some genetic traits available in an area and if interbreeding starts in the species these could actually these genetic things would exchange or share well and they could protect and give the traits lot many places so this is again a very straight forward question let's see the fifth question describe how ecosystem services of himalayas are essential for highland lowland sustainability in asia so see this question has been coming since 3 4 years now you have to look for what are the ecosystem services you must know them ecosystem services and if you understand what are the ecosystem services you will have to understand that there is a relationship between the highland if this is the highland at its foot would lie the lowland this is my lowland and this lowland is dependent upon the highland in many ways for example rivers for example rainfall for example suppose if any such of deforestation happens there it will also be prone to landslides perhaps so any of the provisioning services scenic services any of these things could actually be established between the relationship of your highland and lowland so it is utmost necessary that you maintain the ecosystems of the highlands properly so that the lowlands also can be having some sustainability and it is very well asked that ecosystem services of himalayas are very essential for highland and lowland sustainability in asia so they are not only talking about india they would talk about asia asia means that highland here also and lowlands here also so both have to be taken care of that how these himalayas can perhaps impact the highland and the lowland of asia 
let's move to question number two so one if you see the direct observation is these questions could have been done easily these are perhaps very direct questions these are very direct and if you have done your notes well if you have attended the sessions well these could have been done let's come to the second part describe how ecosystem no this we have done okay the concept of plate tectonics has been divided has been derived from isostasy has been derived from isostasy and continental drift theory please understand while you were doing the plate tectonics you will already been studying about what is continental drift continental drift theory is a proof that the plate tectonics perhaps will come up and the plate tectonics is giving out some value to any of the things for example the sea floor spreading isostasy and the continental drift theory that were already existing so plate tectonics is an amalgamation it's a package of all these things so when the continents were drifting what are the forces responsible for it why in this fashion only it is moving plate tectonics explain it to us isostasy talks about a balance that is maintained a balance that is maintained maybe between the continents and the oceans and the continent continental themselves a balance is maintained and this plate tectonics all talk about if the balance disturbs somewhere somewhere else there is going to be either rising or the down warping that will happen so plate tectonics is a clear cut derivative of isostasy and cdt this is very much clear let's move on to next question give a detailed account of bottom topography of the pacific ocean now any geography optional student he will already study the indian ocean bathymetric your atlantic ocean also and pacific ocean also so this will have to cover your basins which are there the low lying areas for example trenches your undersea volcanoes we have to cover the ridge system for example the east pacific rise all such things will come here the islands that are there so very easy question i suppose and this will be all about the bottom topography of the pacific ocean that you have to discuss and you have to talk about what is the depth where it is more where it is less this all will be discussed about so again a very direct question let's move to third one soil erosion and soil degradation are threat to food supply discuss now see this looks like as a very very current affairs and a general knowledge thing it's a very general question and it is also related with current affairs now you do not have that liberty to go to general studies thing so what you have to talk about is you first have to understand or make the examiner understand that you understand what are the horizons of soil and if soil erosion is happening the nutrient balance is changing the nutrient balance is changing plus soil degradation will have to range from your concepts of your desertification your desertification plus your agronomic practices your agronomic practices plus your water logging any such thing that will be there and because of this the soil is degrading but these are going to have an impact or threat these are threat to food supply because your production and your productivity is directly responsible or is directly related to land capability this is again some technical thing that you have to write land capability that the land capabilities again measured into what is the soil condition what are the avenues available with it so you cannot write in general terms you will have to talk about the productivity and production that is related to land capability some zonation is also made and if the nutrient balance is changing and if the land degradation is happening soil degradation is happening this is perhaps going to threat your food supply very easy that you could have written let's see another one examine the major influencing factors of varied patterns of precipitations on the continents now i think no one amongst us would not be able to write this question we understand that the precipitation has its own distribution thing it is distributed as per latitude also it can also be distributed as per the or it is also impacted see the question is influencing factors so currents the oceanic currents the latitudes the wind system the prevailing wind system that is there also plus if you talk about the orography the orography that is present so these all could be responsible for what is the precipitation on the continent where it is what so you could have given an example of maybe a continent you would have shown that this is suppose if this is the equator suppose there lies a range here 
and you could have given the answer or for any world map you could have made and shown it a very easy one let's move to the next question maritime security is being neglected full stop indicate the major challenges and suggest the solutions in the context of law of the sea now see this question perhaps is again very much related to current affairs but you don't have to be so much into general you will have to bring in your geographical knowledge you might have studied spickman's theory and this person talks so much about maritime influence and maritime as a power that could even come abroad the land so if i know about the maritime thing i could say that even spickman was worried about this that it's actually if it is neglected if it is neglected there are certain challenges that it will be bringing about the challenges could be in the form of maybe sovereignty resources any such thing trade economy everything will be impacted if the maritime security is neglected society everything would be neglected and it says that suggest solutions in the context of law of the sea so one thing is clear you will have to take care of un clause that there is united nation convention on the law of the sea which has divided the waters into certain zones but the problem is that there are certain countries for example china china would not be understanding what perhaps is the clause and they would not try to even follow up any such arbitral award when it is given if this is a situation no such law of the sea can work and hence the solution is that it should be uh, there should be some maybe a uh, mandatory clauses some mandatory clauses into some protocols plus penalties be ensured if they are not following it if they are not following it so one time grievance redressal could be there but not all the time so mandatory and penalties clause could be there and law of the sea perhaps uh, the un body when it sits together they try to take into consideration the consensus of all the countries and then take a decision a very uh, current affairs question but you should have written about spickman also okay explaining the concept of carbon neutrality describe the measures taken by carbon positive and carbon negative nations now this again question could have been expected but in geography optional one uh, paper one it is coming so it's a bit sort of thing that you will have to go on some general terms now carbon neutrality if you have to discuss you will have to talk about what perhaps brings about this so what will bring about this carbon neutrality what will bring about the carbon neutrality and there are two groups now one is the carbon positive group and one is carbon negative group and every developing country would wants its peak to come so that it would have its own share of carbon dioxide being released because developmental activities are will have some emissions when they have it the peak should be achieved first and then they could have thought about doing or with the negative carbon thing but for the time being the developing countries also require this measures taken could be many you could have talked about green certificates they are also shared some projects that are going on so a lot of things were there and from current affairs you could have related it so again something from general awareness and something of your idea that you could have given so till this point i feel that every of the question of question number 2 also i feel that a very easy question very easy questions and you could have done them easily if you just have some keywords with you next set of questions this third one also again not very difficult it tends towards your general awareness general awareness and here would come the use of you don't have to read many books so be very clear you just have to give themes if you have the themes in your uh, geography optional under those themes you can write the answers if you just keep on taking the books and do not study it and maybe after even studying you cannot retain it that is a problem that could come up let's see fourth question with suitable examples elaborate human ecological adaptations explain its impacts on ecology and environment in various parts of the world so uh, this question is talking about the ecological adaptations that uh, have come to the human basically the best ecological adaptation that has come is your mind is actually trying to protect yourself this is the best ecological protection or adaptation that has come earlier when we did not have that much of adaptation when just the uh, homo sapiens would come up they would not even think of how to protect ourselves but this is ecological adaptation that has brought about a mind change a running mind that is trying to do every bit to save itself that is going to have an impact on ecology and environment 
various psychological adaptations you can talk about first one is mind second one is about your uh, maybe the area that you inhabit and the ways that you do this your zeal to uh, maybe protect yourself from any of the climate change uh, any of the adaptation in the body that you can talk about so these all are going to have an impact on ecology and environment in various parts of the world and you could have shown the regions that in this part this is the adaptation and this is perhaps a challenge or this is perhaps something that is going to uh, happen in this area for example even the antarctica today is not left perhaps people have even reached here and they have done every adaptation thing to survive in here they are also trying to maybe there is a danger that the antarctica which was left aloof not being anthropogenized and there are activities that could take place a lot of things uh, you could have written here again it tends towards somewhat general awareness your mind and if you have done your geography optional that part if you have done i think you could have done this okay let's come to b stream basins and the drainage divides please see stream basins and the drainage divides are important components to delineate a watershed area now this is perhaps the watershed approach if you would have done this well you can understand what is watershed so this is a stream basin just imagine and it is actually the divides if they are lying here so if this is a common stream that flows here and there are some tributaries also to it so this basin area which is divided by this divide that is standing at two locations maybe it is bounded by it so whatever water of tributaries of the streams of the groundwater if they are in confluence of the stream that is the watershed area this you had to explain and you could have taken an example maybe from the country and you could have shown this so watershed area the stream basins and the divides that are there these are the components to delineate a watershed area got it okay let's move to next question and that is indicating the causes of lightning describe the threats associated with it so you had this in jodhpur an incident took place perhaps in paris it has already been so much in news so that question maybe they are regularly asking on lightning and thunderstorms and thunderstorms they have been regularly asking this so i think an advisory to us could be that let's not ignore even the minutest of the keywords if lightning is happening there are certain theories of lightning also thunderstorms perhaps and the threats anyone could write but causes of lightning if we know the theories well the approaching clouds or the charges that could have been written very well into these question. I think you could have written this if you have read this about. Okay, let's come to section B now. Let's see the first one. Interrelationships between social and spatial structure are complex. Explain in the context of socio-spatial dialect. Now see, social and spatial structure you would have to discuss. This question is not only about your general knowledge or your society. This question is about the human interaction, the human interaction that has been happening since ages. For example, there's a word called as compage. There's a word called as sequent occupants, sequent occupants. And all these theorists, for example, Wittelsey, Vidal de Lablache, they have already talked about a social and spatial structure, which under which or with which, within which, the relationships are very complex so this we would have we should have written here and this was again something if you study your human geography well with a broad horizon any such thing you could write next question how is energy transition seen as an instrument for achieving zero carbon by 2050 now see again talking about carbon neutrality that anything that you do do not release as carbon or whatever carbon do you release you again have the process to sink it down. So energy transition would again mean that you are moving from your non-conventional towards your conventional. And this is not about India. See, this is paper one. So they are taking a very broad view. So you will have to talk about how various parts of the world are moving towards from non-conventional, maybe sorry, from conventional towards the non-conventional ones from conventional towards the non-conventional ones or from your such sources which we have used conventionally maybe coal maybe oil etc towards such resources which we can find naturally for example wind for example solar 
for example electric and electric in this electric we may be take example of wind and solar again so this is about transiting to some energy that is not emitting carbon or whatever carbon it emits there is a process that can even allow for it sink down that is your carbon neutrality by 2050 so you could have talked about tidal there somewhere in the north you could have talked about the winds maybe of this mediterranean land in the maybe your uh, uae and sort of things you could have talked about the electric vehicles us electric vehicles so this you could have talked about let's move protected cultivation assists in healthier and a larger produce justify with examples you see the definition of protected cultivation is that this is a regulated this is a regulated agriculture when the agriculture is done under some regulated condition it is called as protected cultivation that means you are regulating the moisture you are regulating the nutrients and for example if i talk about the dry land farming the dry land farming these are moisture and nutrient regulated plus they are protected from the pest attacks also so every integrated approach along with moisture and nutrient management would lead to what your crops to develop well these would be healthier crops and could even give you larger produce so all those developed countries that are trying to regulate their agriculture in regulated conditions when they are growing they are growing well they are growing more clear let's move to explain the processes of contagion and hierarchical diffusion in addressing regional imbalances okay now see this question a very technical one yet we can understand so there are various processes to trickle down whatever is the developmental effort various processes are there one type of diffusion is called as the contagion which is to mean that if this is the idea this will spread it to this this will spread 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 to this and through this it will spread to another area or another person like this this is contagion the same thing is your contagious the contagious as you can see the pandemic the contagious pandemic so this is contagion diffusion that the diffusion that developmental efforts so this question is about addressing regional imbalances so how could you address the regional imbalances when you have the fruits of development transferred to every individual every individual this is one of the ways contagion then what is your uh, this one a hierarchical one please see hierarchical this would mean that suppose you have a node here and you have a node here so hierarchy would be transferring from this node to this node and it does not go to this one it does not go to this one so your effort is to bring about this nodal development through this node you can go to another node but not directly not directly you cannot come from here to here this is via this node only so it is a perhaps following a nodal approach a nodal approach that should not be bypassed and you can choose and maybe go to these areas only via another node so this is hierarchical this is hierarchical for example from any such uh, maybe if uh, imbalance is there and we want to correct it we could also talk about here maybe the growth pole and the growth center thing we could have talked about here a very important one and then we could see that how they are actually trying to bring about some development in the regional region and removing the imbalances so contagion and hierarchical the technical part is this could have done this examine the relevance of cpt of crystaller in the present context now this is something that is uh, done by everyone the central place theory what is actually the relevance of it how well it covers the area how well it covers maybe the people who are to be served it has various principles maybe of transportation administration marketing so this all can be talked about relevance of it in today's world and we could talk about not only of one thing but various processes that are going about ranging from governance trade market anything that we could talk about urbanization and we could talk about that how his theory is really very important or not important so we have to see the examine the relevance relevance you could have shown the relevance also that yes somewhat uh, it looks like uh, that it can do efforts but not uh, it cannot be implemented in the true sense this we would have to write down then let's move to another and these are all mandatory things see again 
development induced displacement poses serious challenges as mentioned its causes consequences and solutions now see again a very easy i would say development is happening which induces which induces some displacement how if the development is happening here the people will get a pull factor the people will get a pull factor and if we are pulled towards this developmental node that would mean that you are perhaps getting the development happen or concentrate at one place and the other areas are not able to develop this was the problem of paris and the french desert the paris and the french desert that was a notion that was given that the paris is developed but out you south you go of paris you find nothing this perhaps can also be discussed with growth pole and the growth center theory when this is to about concentration this is about diffusion i hope very easily people knew about this and they could have written let's see 6b describe the role of accessibility and affordability in food security of developing world now see the question revolves around developing world developing world the notion itself is clear is about some per capita income is there and if this per capita income is not able to maybe afford the food then it's a problem for example the food security has three a's accessibility affordability and availability the three a's that are there once the price of the food is changing worldwide or could be there could be some shock perhaps this is going to have repercussions jotters or jotters being sent across the developing world so yes the role of accessibility and affordability becomes very important to ensure that the people in the developing countries who are not able to afford they get the bare minimum and for this various programs are also there to bring about the food that is accessible to them near about so this can also be about decentralized approach decentralized approach for accessibility and for affordability the decentralized imaginative the keyword could be imaginative decentralized approach this you could have written a very general based question but you could have talked about per capita income and other sort of things here now let's move to 6c the environmental issues are not adequately addressed in the regional planning comment okay now see again a worldwide question has come and it asks that environmental issues are not adequately discussed the problem is all the regional planning models the regional planning models that are there perhaps they focus only on the development part they do not have any scope of environmental concerns and if they so have the development would be again 90% that would only be 10% of the environmental concern and once this development happens so the environmental concerns are still lingering for example if you even take up the gunar midal's idea the gunar midal's idea when he talks about that a time would come a time would come when any such developmental effort will trickle down but then even this environmental issues are not being discussed or not been talked about so they these all development models they are perhaps looking at one angle only that is development they are not looking towards the environmental concern so very valid question that has come but this has to be done with the application of mind this you cannot do just by studying this has to be done by a lot of applications that you can think that where are the regional planning models and then i could have picked up okay suggest criteria indicators and techniques for delineation of formal regions dekhega i think you already know about the formal functional and your planning regions you all know about this formal regions would be the homogeneous region and this homogeneity could come in what form maybe natural there are mountains maybe there is a plateau there is a plain so these are formal regions so criteria indicators and techniques when you read the definition of it everything is mentioned how it is demarked or how it is maybe demarcated ear mark or how it is what are the parameters of it everything is there everything is there so very easy very straight forward question has come in formal they could have even asked you about functional they could have even asked you about planning but they asked about the formal regions okay 7b boundaries are important in geopolitics explain what issues develop from the inclusionary and exclusionary aspects of the borders now i think from last 6 years or so these questions on boundaries and frontiers are coming 
boundaries and frontiers. The first thing is that we must understand what are these. You must understand. Second is what are the theories behind these, and who has given what theory? For example, even Hartshorn has given an idea. Hartshorn has given an idea about what the frontiers could be, and what are the borders? He has given every such idea. Now the question is, boundaries are important in geopolitics. That is very correct. What issues develop from the inclusionary and exclusionary aspects of the borders? Now please see. Inclusionary aspect could be, suppose this is my border. Inclusionary aspects could be, for example, migration. For example, trade. So these are inclusionary to the border. Secondly, if I talk about the exclusionary policies, that means you are trying to have a such, a such border is maintained that is perhaps excluding, perhaps excluding any such scope of the entities that we have discussed just like migration trade you are excluding their scope that is exclusionary and both of them will have some issues both of them will have some issues inclusionary also and exclusionary also so this is not something that you will study this is something that you will have to apply that what is inclusionary of that border and what could be exclusionary of that border this you will have to understand from your mind and then you will have to write down i would not say this is a very difficult had you applied some mind then you could have done this See the next one. Small number of mega cities are playing key role in organization of global economics and culture. Now see again. This question highlights that your mega cities that are coming up or that have come up, they are perhaps the focus of, they are the diffusers of what? These are the diffusers of global economic and cultural activities or they are the amalgamation of global economy and culture. Any such mega city when it is coming up, it is an amalgamation of different ideas, different economies, different customs, different cultures. And they are perhaps playing key role in organizing it, in organizing the global economics. So they could become the economic center. They could also become the cultural center, etc. These are some points that you could have written and perhaps you have to explain this. So this is again very, uh, I would say very much a sensical based question. It is not to be studied on a maybe daily basis, but yes, if you could have talked about mega cities, examples and what role they could play in global economics and culture, I think that would suffice with this. And we have somewhat discussed this uh, boundaries frontiers. We have already discussed this uh, one uh, formal regions. We have discussed all these are discussed in the sessions also. 8AC. Why is radicalism seen as a major paradigm shift in geography? Explain its causes, approaches and criticisms. Now, what another thing that we have seen in the paper is, this time the paper is very straightforward, but they ask you all the things. For example, they would ask you, what are the causes? They would ask you, what are the solutions? And what are perhaps the criticisms? Criticism. So everything they are embedding in one question only, the same is happening here. Why is radicalism seen? So you had with you Pete, you had with you Harvey and you could have talked about how radicalism would set up in geography that will again make everything human centric. Gone are the those of positive, the positivist days when the people used to take a point as human being. The radical people would come and they would say that no human being is the sole entity or focus around which everything revolves. How can you take it as the only point? So this has become a very important revolution in geography and every sort of fight for food, poverty, maybe land, resources, everything is a maybe repercussion of or maybe a fruit of radicalism. So this is what you have to write about the causes of it, positivist one of this approaches. There were many approaches that you already read in the notes and the criticisms. It became too much towards the radical side. So it was somewhat to be stopped. Let's move to 8B. Aging population has adverse social and economic consequences explained with examples. Now see, if you could have studied a demographic transition theory well, you could have understood that there is a phase when it comes into the life or of that uh, country that its population of aged people increases so much. As soon as this increases, one thing is for sure that the working population is less. The people who need care is more. So economic repercussions are clear in the way that exchequer burden is there to take care of. Second, who is going to do the work? No one. So the people would migrate in or would be allowed to migrate in. Third, 
a nexus will have to be developed between these people who are coming in so that they could really sustain the economy. Fourth, isolation and people who are perhaps dependent, they do not find anyone. So there are perhaps uh, social problems that would come up, social unrest that would even come up and new people who are coming in, maybe they are trying to have some influence there. So a lot of tussles are going to go about. So very important, you could have taken the example of Germany, Canada, Japan, etc. Could have taken the examples. Okay. Last question. Present a critical account of Alfred Weber theory of industrial location. Please understand. Alfred Weber theory of industrial location. Every one of us do this. The Weber triangle, the industrial location, the factors, the triangle we have drawn, the weight losing, the weight gaining, everything we know. We just have to present a critical account of it. That how much well it is and how much well it is not. And every one of us, if we have done the geography optional, we could have easily done this. So my observation is that this paper is really very straightforward. It's very straightforward. The questions are tending towards general awareness. So you will have to develop some general awareness and you will have to broaden up your mind. So you will have to broaden up your mind so that you do not stop somewhere. Plus, you will have to pre, uh, maybe prepared with, you have to be prepared with some examples in the form of maps, some factors that are to be there with you, some diagrams that should be there with you. You will have to be very much in touch with the current affairs so that you can tackle with these questions. And I see trending is, the geography optional trend is, they are moving more towards the current affairs parts, but you don't have to forget, uh, you don't have to forget that it is geography optional so you will have to use the theories, the principles that you utilize in it or that you use in it. So take care of this, that you will have to understand the static part well. You have to mix it with the current affairs and broaden up your horizon. You will have to prepare some maps. You will have to write some answers. Now, I will again say, uh, say that this perhaps uh, whatever we have talked about, one thing is for sure that this paper requires a lot of practice. And it requires some study in good fashion. Study in a, I would say, standard manner. If you have not studied in a standard manner, this will not help. Hey, why study would not work? So make a discipline routine. For next year, when you are preparing for geography optional, try to make a routine. Take out some keywords. Perhaps I can provide you the keywords. Let's practice. Let's study. And I think we shall crack it. And there are some special sessions also that I'm taking of physical geography on the app that you have got. Plus course will also come and my code is CMC. You can apply to take any course across. For example, the optional subscription only if you want to enroll in the geography optional. 2292 is the price. And if you take it with the code of CMC, you are going to get in 2063. Plus the mega test series is running by. You can try to take it 15 questions, 15 minutes. And every day we are going to have it. For example, Monday is your the Hindu. Tuesday is medieval, Wednesday is science and technology, Thursday you have economics, then you have ancient Friday, CSAT you have Saturday, so you have to just attempt the test, 15 questions, 15 minutes. And we are already launching this geography optional, plus other optional channels also, uh, optional uh, maybe starting at an academy, so you can try to enroll yourself or anyone out there who wants to enroll in it, you can do this. Iconic subscription is some place where you can find us, I can have a one, one, one is to one mentoring with you. So live mentoring is there. Study planner is given and open house with educators is already done. So you can do this and also loan facilities available. So you can get it 0% interest rate, no processing fee and the flexible tenure that is given to you. Plus, if you want to take, you will have it 4333 per month. But if you apply my code of CMC, you are going to get it 3899. And for iconic, please understand, you will have 6208 per month. But if you apply my code of CMC, you are going to get it 5587. So try to have it. And uh, 19th of January, we are starting with this 2023 resolve batch. It's already taken the resolution, I suppose. The people who want to join the batch starting from 19th January, you can see mission 2022, selection 2022, expedition 2022, mission 2023, election 2023, and expedition 2023 starting 19th January. 20 sets of GS books will be provided, and plus also your test series will be provided, and your mentorship is being provided. So we are waiting for you, perhaps. I think it's the high time that you finalize your optionals. Let's make a strategy. Let's try to have evolve some different ways of learning so that it can set into our head and you try to ever fly the broadened horizon that you have made as UPS is also enlarging. And let me 
help you thank you so much subscribe share this if you like this and take care of yourself thank you so much